And we're live. We're live. Good evening, America, and welcome to Speed and Chrome Illustrated. My name is Mitch. I am the Southern California West Coast publisher for Speed and Chrome Illustrated. And with me, as always, is Speed and Chrome Illustr Illustrated publisher. I'm a producer. He's a publisher. Lance James and our man in the Midwest, Tony Emig, joining us with an Arizona shirt on. Yes. Guys, how is your week going? Well, my laptop blew up, so. <laughs> so for, uh, for everybody who's watching tonight, uh, this is kind of uh, experimental for us. Uh, Lance is our generally our host, and his computer conked out, so he called me at the last minute and told me I'm hosting, and I'm working on a 12-year-old <laughs> desktop that's been upgraded and banged around a bunch of times, and uh, so we're hoping this all works out. We got cell phones going and all kinds of fun stuff. So if there's any little glitches, uh, you'll forgive us in advance. Uh, but for now, we're just going to have some fun and uh, chit chat and chew on your ears for another 40 minutes. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining. Um, so uh, Lance, you were, you were telling us that last week uh, you were getting ready to send the gasser out for all kinds of metal work and fun stuff. Uh, any, did they make any progress on that this week? Yeah, I was able to get it dropped off uh, Saturday, and my brother come over with the trailer. Then we loaded it up and took it up to actually it was like almost a hundred miles one way to get it up to the shop. So he's up in the, the Sierra Nevada mountains, and uh, so it was a beautiful day, it was a beautiful drive. I got a nice sunburn on the top of my head, and uh, so yeah, I went up there, hung out for a while. Uh, got it dropped off. Got a tour of his shop. He also restores um, vintage camp trailers uh going all the way back to you know all the all the canned ham trailers and all the different types of trailers so we get a tour of his shop and um hopefully well i'm going to be going up there a few times to check on the car and do different things and check different things out so i'll i'll shoot some video when i go up there and i just shot video of us dropping it off so um yeah he's got a neat a neat setup and uh i'll, I'll get some photos and video of that but so that went well, got it dropped off. And uh, now I need to sell some of my stuff so I can uh, fund the project. So I got a 37 DeSoto that's for sale and uh, that's 58 Ford panel truck that I've been working on for the last year. It's um, probably about two weeks away from putting it up for sale. So get those sold and that should fund uh, the rest of the gasser and some of my other projects hopefully. So so that was, that was Saturday and that's probably the only car related thing I've done this week. It's uh, I've uh, we've, we're working on painting our house. So that's been sucking up a lot of my time and energy. So, but yeah. All right. How about you, Tony? What happened exciting this week? Oh, exciting. Nothing. Um, <laughs> went, been working on the boys truck, trying to get it ready for when he turns 16 in June and, uh, fighting a no start issue right now and just uh, I, I don't know if I'm making it better by just throwing parts at it or what but uh, just trying to hunt down that gremlin that's not letting it start it, it it's run before uh, which is what's frustrating about it but um, nothing exciting like Lance getting to haul a car off to go see another cool shop or anything like that so just working on the truck and trying to get it ready and uh, try not to drive myself crazy in the in the in the meantime so Far out. And uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, we got uh, got some problems with uh, with Lance over there. So hopefully he'll be rejoining us here in just a minute. There he is. Ah, oh, he was changing his headphones out, getting the microphone up. Yeah, there we getting go. Getting a lot of a lot of feedback. I don't know if it's recording that or not. Yeah, lots of crack running and popping. So yeah, the ghost, the ghost typist came back this week. <laughs> the, I don't know if anybody yeah, heard the last week. The ghost typist last week driving us <laughs> bonkers, so, and I'm like, "What is that sound?" So we're getting used to it. Yeah, I know. But uh, we're getting yeah, there. Yeah, one one uh, one stream at a time. So yeah, this uh, <laughs> this week uh, I, I went and I picked up that Nova uh, last weekend, and. Um, it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was a clean, clean, clean car, completely disassembled, uh, all the part. It was just ready. It's one of those projects where 
if you wanted to build a little street strip car, it would have been perfect because mm -hmm. it was already mm -hmm. all torn apart. But uh, after we did some research on it, it turned out that she owed $900 in back fees. Mm -hmm. and oh. Yeah, so she was. So it wasn't on not up. Like yeah, no, she was. Up. She was a friend of mine, and she was willing to take eleven hundred bucks from me for the car. Uh, but then when I looked at the nine hundred dollars in fees, I couldn't, in good conscience, give her two hundred dollars for the car. Right, right. So yeah, that's not good. So I found somebody and sold it to them for her, and got her a nice little chunk of change. And good. so, and it turns out that he was with a guy that I knew from back in the old days. So. It was a it was a really smooth deal, and the guy's gonna be really really super happy with his car. And poor thing, she was waffling back and forth and trying to figure out, you know, can I find a place to store it? I know I'm gonna regret yeah. this, and my my kids and this and that. And so I said, look, you're gonna spend twenty grand on that car to get a car that you could sell for twelve grand. So I would just go out and buy a twelve thousand dollar car and call it a day. And she, yeah, you're right, right, you're right. You know. So I think she made a good decision and uh, she's got some cash in her pocket and she can just uh, whatever. But um, so let me, let me, let me get this straight. As far as the, is it the city or the County or whatever? If, if something's not running, is it like if it's not tagged, it can't be seen from the street or an alley. Correct. It has to be inside of a building. It has to be behind a fence or okay. inside the garage. Yeah. And so wow. they historically have had problems with the city. Um, yeah. Her husband, who's a friend of mine, uh, well, soon to be her ex-husband, uh, who is a friend <laughs> of mine, um, he, they, he always had project cars out in the driveway. So the city was yeah. always giving him a bunch of grief. Uh, and uh, so he pulled all of his stuff out of there. And so that one was sitting in the alley. But the city that we're in, they just... You know, it's a, it's kind of a, <laughs> I don't want to insult our town, but it's kind of a podunk little town in the middle of this sprawling suburbanite metropolis. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, this used to be a farm town. Like you okay. wouldn't think like right in the middle of suburban Los Angeles, just east of the beach. But this was, there was hay farms and bean fields and strawberry fields and that kind okay. of stuff all around here. And so a lot of the city is still kind of hokey like that you know and so it's still a small <laughs> town in the town and so they, they've still got a lot of old-fashioned ways about doing things and they want to keep the image in the city up uh, yeah and and it's done a good job because what used to be known as the armpit of the south bay now has property values that rival all of the surrounding cities which is insane but um yeah so it, it was either she'd lose the car because uh, yeah. she had nowhere to put it or, you know, so I helped her out and she gave me a couple of bucks and, you know, we're off, we're off and run. So everybody made outfits. Oh, well, that's cool. So that was that. So now I get to go back and focus on not finishing my tea bucket for another couple of years. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so since I got you guys on the line here, we're all kind of still getting to know each other here. Uh, our audience is all still getting to know us here on Speed and Chrome. I thought I'd uh, give you guys an opportunity to just kind of tell us what you do for your day jobs when you're not be busy being an internet celebrity. <laughs> so <laughs> or car uh, car nut, right? Yeah. So uh, I'll start with uh, with you, Tony. What uh, what is it that you uh, occupy yourself with in your on hours? Uh, well, this year uh, I started teaching middle school technology at a, a private Christian school here in um, Oklahoma City. Um, been an adventure tell you that uh, sharp sharp learning curve um, but it's it's a uh, it, it's a place where I can say that easily that uh, the Lord has prepared me for and with all my my past ventures I've done but before that I spent uh, nearly 20 years in uh, television at a local television station here in Oklahoma City and uh, um, doing that for a long time and then just uh, as the dominoes fell, I ended up becoming technology teacher for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and it, it's been fun. So here in about two weeks, I'm actually going to be unemployed for the summer, technically, because of the you know, <laughs> I still get paid, but the contract ends. I just stretch my paycheck out over the year, but uh, that's about it. Other than that, I'm just uh, doing dad stuff, you know, mowing and working on cars and 
we're going to do some traveling this summer, I think, as long as the world opens up again soon. So, All right. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here in California. Anyhow, uh, it's been uh, it's been a circus. If you pay attention uh-huh. to the news of uh, everything, the people in Cal, I mean, people in California live where they live and pay what they pay uh, and for very good reason. And they don't want uh, anybody telling them they can't go outside and go to the beach. And no. so, so we've had a lot of protests springing up around yep. here and uh, it's, it's been nuts. And so even though the governor said that uh, we're not reacting to protests, we're reacting to science. As soon as everybody started protesting, he reacted. Okay. <laughs> science changed. <laughs> yeah, the science got quick. Uh, but um, so Lance is in uh, Northern Cal- Central California. What do you guys consider yourself? Uh, it's probably considered Central California. Central California. You're yeah, in Modesto. Since we're, in the, we're in the Central Valley. You know, mm-hmm. um, the furthest part of the Central Valley would be like Bakersfield. And the most northern part would probably, you know, be getting into like Sacramento. You know, that's okay. kind of the end, end of the valley. It's a big, 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 long valley. So, yeah, I'm in Modesto. Uh, born and raised in a, in a little town next to Modesto called Riverbank. So that's where I went to high school and graduated. And grew up. But, you know, Modesto was the big town. So we came to Modesto and, you know, did all our car stuff and cruised and uh, did all that stuff here. But, um, yeah, Central Valley. But for my day, my day job, my day gig uh, is I work for the largest winery in the world and uh, based here in Modesto. And uh, so I've been there for about 11 years, a little over 11 years now. And so I've had a couple of different jobs there. All, all kind of, I started out doing computer graphics for them and I kind of still do that, but I work on all their websites. So they have over 150 different brands. Wow. Each brand has their own website, and each website needs to be updated every day, all the time. So that's that's my that's what I'm doing now. So it's changed. I when it moved over, I was in the part of the creative department for was it nine nine years, eight nine years, and then I moved over to digital marketing. So that's what I do now, and uh, been doing graphic graphic design and stuff for probably twenty. Oh boy. 25 years something like that and then before that i mean i've had a lot of different jobs before that i went to school for body and paint so i went to school did that really really love body and paint work got out of school worked for a couple of different body shops and and enjoyed that but i found i i really enjoyed doing it for myself more than doing it for them and uh i found out the only way to really make any money in that industry is to own the shop not work for the shop so uh got kind of disgruntled and then I met my wife and then she's like, you just need to go back to school for, you know, art and design, which is, you know, and that, what was my love at the time and computer graphics were just becoming a thing. You know, this was like 1994 ish. Um, so they were just barely starting to teach computers and art and design and, um, and all that. So yeah, I went back to school and did that, finished that, started working in lots of different jobs doing them. Um, either digitizing for embroidery. I was, they worked in a screen print company for a long time, worked for sign shops, you know, doing graphics, um, worked for just various companies doing graphic design work and stuff. So that's my heavy background. And that's kind of what led me into, you know, producing the magazine to begin with. It's just my background in design. And then I loved, absolutely loved photography, always have. And uh, so, yeah, that kind of was birthed the whole, you know, Speed and Chrome Illustrated magazine print version, you know, which was 2004, January 2004 was the first issue. So, yeah, that set it on, set it all in motion. And uh, we kind of talked about this before, but I really don't have any of my family that's, I, I was like the first car guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have a history of, you know, uncles and i did have one cousin but he was he was a lot lot older than i was he was closer to my dad's age um and he was heavy in the car he had a big influence on me but uh i didn't have any uncles or you know my dad or any of those that were like hey you know come wrench on this car and you know so but mitch you definitely had a had a history of there right yeah that i did um so 
this uh, that's what was in my uh, my garage when I was born. That's that a Camaro? Car. That's a 70 uh, Camaro funny car. Nice. Uh, yeah, that was on a uh, that was on a Ken Cox chassis uh, with a um, 500 inch. Well, originally it was a uh, an A fuel car, so it was injected on nitro. Mm. And then it was, uh, and then they switched over to a blown alcohol motor. Originally, uh, my dad and his brother and a guy named Joe Fantori uh, had the car, and then uh, Joe uh, just wasn't cutting it as a driver, so they hired a guy named Gary Henderson, uh, who happened to work for, I want to say it was Fiberglass Trend. It was one of I can't no J and E Fiberglass. And so he built the body for the car and he also helped with, uh, with the engine and he drove the car. And then, you know, just over time, you know how these partnership deals work out. And my dad would have rather, uh, sacrificed the car than the, than the relationships. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they, my dad got out and then, uh, they sold, uh, <laughs> they sold the motor to a neighbor of, well, a friend of ours, a guy by the name of crazy Ray Sylvester. And uh, he put that motor, that same motor, in a rear engine dragster. Mm. And uh, when they were at uh, Orange County, uh, he ran over my dad in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they were staging the car, and he did a dry hop, and my dad was standing right in front of the rear tire. And boom. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, that was a real nasty thing. Um, and it's funny because all these years – I could never get a straight story from anybody because there was a lot of guys trying to protect their butts. And, mm. uh, and I, I, uh, there was a guy who was there on the starting line who sent me a message and told me the whole story uh, about what really happened. Wow. And, Cause my dad still doesn't know. Cause he woke up <laughs> in the hospital. Oh and, my and, gosh. And he lost that whole thing, you know, which is yeah. uh, kind of crazy. And then, so Ray bought the chassis and the car too. And, and the body, because he said he never wanted to be in another car where he couldn't see, you oh, know, yeah. who was there. So yeah. he went on, to, and that was the, that was the California Rattler car, and uh, he drove. His daughter actually wound up driving that car. Uh, he, that chassis went forever and ever and ever. But um, then after my dad got out, my uncle continued uh, with Alterds and Econo dragsters and that kind of stuff. So I stayed in that my whole life. But in the house, we never had. Um, we never had hot rods. My dad wasn't a car guy. Okay. He was a racer. Ah. Now, that's not – that was a kind of a recent thing because early on my dad was a car guy. And so I'll tell you a little bit of a story. Uh, back in about 1957-ish, uh, my dad was walking up and down what was then known as Compton Boulevard. And there was a little shop there called Peterson's Garage. And there was this 1944 coupe that was just sitting in the lot and had been sitting there for some time. And my dad would walk back and forth on his way to school and around, and he'd see that car and he'd see it. My dad's, you know, 14 years old. And uh, he goes in and he's, he, he uh, says, Pete, hey, uh, I was thinking you might sell me that car. And Pete looks at him and says, well, how much money you got, kid? And my dad says, well, I don't have any money. I figured you'd give me a job and I'd work it off. And my dad had no no sense of going into the automotive business. He just wanted to sweep floors and get his car and, you know, and so Pete put him <laughs> to work, taught him the yeah. trade. Wow. And my dad wound up running his shop for nine years. Wow. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Uh, he went on to open up, uh, Amato's automotive in Gardena. And then from there he opened a golf station here in Lawndale. And then from there, uh, he opened up a dyno station, uh, in Hawthorne, a dyno shop. And then when he, uh, the, the, where I'm sitting right now, the office I'm sitting in right now, he built this building in 1971 so that he could occupy it as his business. Mm. But somewhere along the line, someone came and offered him a job and he just couldn't pass it up. So he took the job and he put renters in this building. So growing up, my dad was a mechanic. He went on to, he retired as an executive uh, from the city that he was uh, working at. Um, but so I grew up, I mean, the, the earliest pictures of me are me sitting in that funny car, 
uh, or with wrenches in my hand, you know, pretending I'm taking spark plugs out or whatever. <laughs> so I grew up a little drag strip rat, you know, chasing nice. around at Orange County and Irwindale and, uh, you know, Riverside and Carlsbad and Inyo Kern and Palmdale and Vegas and all of that kind of stuff. And so uh, I was always into race cars. Uh, and I, I had a thing for the, the muscle cars, of course, because I was always seeing the Camaros and the Challengers mm -hmm. and the Chargers and the Mustangs and all that kind of the Novas and all that. I particularly got a real big tickle for the second generation Corvettes, you know, mm. a, 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 an open top second generation dedicated drag car. That's like the ultimate cool thing as far as I'm concerned. But <laughs> so, you know, I grew up reading National Dragster and, you know, other kids were reading Sports Illustrated. I was reading National Dragster, you know, and um, so, you know, growing up, I just knew that I wanted to go into the automotive trades. Mm. And as most boomer parents will do, they tried to get me to, they, you need to go to college, son. You need to get a good education with a retirement plan and all that kind of jazz. But I didn't want to, I wanted to turn wrenches. And my dad did everything he could to talk me out of it. Wow. So one day he actually came and he showed me his hands and they were all bruised and beaten and cut and all dry and cracked from all the chemicals and stuff. And he goes, this is what it takes to put food on the table. Are you sure this is the life you want? And I was like, yeah, I do. And he, he's like, <laughs> it's good. He's just like, go to the Navy, like do anything but this. It's, it's hard work, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I was, you know, I mean, I was, I had the potential to be a good student, but I didn't like school. Uh, the only two classes I, <laughs> I went to regularly were auto shop and corral. I was a singer and a mechanic, and that's the only two <laughs> classes I went to regularly. You know, I, they actually socially graduated me. You know, I, I entered school as an A student, and they, they had to, you know, they didn't want me back another year, so they socially uh, <laughs> promoted <Wow>. me. <laughs> um, he aged out. Yeah, no, I think I had like 31 absences in one class, and it was, I, didn't, um, I just didn't go to school the whole last year. Uh, but, Sounds like my last year of high school. Yeah. yeah. You know, we'd, we'd show up in auto shop, jump in our Jeep, take off and go run around and then come back. And eh, anyway, very irresponsible. And I hope my children <laughs> uh, aren't as willy nilly about things as I was. But yeah. I, I knew that I wasn't going to go to university. So I didn't really care about SAT scores or transcripts or anything like that. So after high school, I went to Cerritos College and I enrolled in the General Motors Automotive Service Excellence Program. And I got my AA degree and I got a GM certification. And in that period of time, I went to work for Champion Chevrolet in Manhattan Beach as, a, um, as an apprentice. And so I worked in all the departments over there. But I, I took a uh, kind of a liking to heavy line, doing engine work and mm -hmm. doing that kind of stuff. And I just felt like I had a natural aptitude for it. But then something weird happened. Uh, I hurt my back really bad on the job one day. Mm. And... As I was laying there, laid up, uh, kind of half tanked on Vicodin, I kind of had these thoughts like, you know, I'm going to work for these guys for 40 years. And after I've given my life and my body to make them rich, I'm not going to get really anything more than a pat on the back on the way out the door. So I said, yeah, maybe it's time to rethink my life decisions. So uh, I went back to school, uh, went to business school. And realized very quickly that I didn't uh, want to spend my life in a cubicle with an inverted noose around my neck. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, so I, I, did, I did that. And then I, I got into the restaurant business, which I really enjoyed. If I wasn't doing what I'm doing today, I'd be, I'd, I'd own a restaurant. I love, love, love the restaurant business. Yeah. Uh, and I did that for 10 years, uh, nine years. But in that time, I went back to university to get my, my uh, bachelor's and I studied uh, on. Uh, audio engineering and digital recording with a uh, minor in uh, music. So I'm, I was a music student. So just like you, the computer stuff was really starting to come in hard mm -hmm. right at that time. So I got it on the cusp of all that and got yeah. to see all the big booms in the industry. But then I learned very quickly that I just don't like musicians. Um, <laughs> and I just didn't want to be in that business, you know? That's so, <laughs> so here I was again. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do. 
uh, you know, there was there was kids standing in line to do the job for free that mm-hmm. I was qualified to do. And it was just, you know, I was going to go work for somebody for, you know, 10 bucks an hour or something. I just yeah. couldn't do it. So I was working at a uh, car dealership at the time. This was about 2002. And at that point, everything was dead slow. Mitsubishi was giving cars away. Wow. They were they were selling cars, no interest, no payments for five years. It's just the, the payment, yeah, the payment was due. Uh, the, the total amount was due when the, the term expired. Like we just could not move cars off the lot. And wow. so I'm sitting here just looking at looking at this going, man, this I'm like, I feel like the lowest, that was the lowest point of my life. And then I get a phone call from my dad. He says, Hey, there's a position at the city. I know you swore you'd never go back into the business. It's a full-time temporary position. You'll have to test for the position, but you can have it tomorrow if you want it. So I quit my job and I went back to turning wrenches and I forgot how much I liked it in the right setting. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, I was a police mechanic. I worked for the city. So I was doing cop cars and, you know, the city trucks and all that kind of stuff. So it was a real easy job. It wasn't very challenging. Uh, You know, it was cool. But then politics came into play in the city. A lot of things started going upside down and I knew that it wasn't an environment that I could thrive in. Mm -hmm. So I had to start looking at other options. My dad had retired a couple of years uh, prior to this. And so I just began to start a dialogue with him about opening the shop up here uh, at Astromotive. And we bant- bantered it back and forth and back and forth. And um, so six months into working for the city in 2002, uh, I hurt my neck really bad. I dislocated a bunch of discs, but I was on probation, so I never said anything. And I just mm. paid for everything, paid for all my own treatment and all that for five years. And then it got to the point where I couldn't put my hands above my head for more than like 15 seconds. And my hands were going numb and it was just, it was really, really bad. So uh, I filed the claim and everything that I knew was going to happen, happened. They kicked me out of my division. They changed the locks on the garage door. They wow. started treating me like I was some kind of a criminal. It was terrible. And um, so in that time, my dad and I, the dialogue kept, kept going and we decided to open up. So December, 2007, uh, we opened up on the day the Great Recession started. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, but we've been here ever since, 12 years and, uh, and going strong. And we started out, you know, just doing general maintenance and repair for, yeah. you know, Toyotas and Hondas and Chevy trucks and all that kind of stuff. You know, timing belts and struts and brakes and all that. And then maybe about two years ago, give or take, year and a half ago, and we always had a classic car in here. I'd always yeah. have one little project that we were working on for somebody. I just, I liked having it. I liked looking yeah. at it and then people from the street would see it. Yeah. And then about a year and a half ago, the whole business just made a left turn. And now 90% of our business is all custom and classic and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's been a real interesting kind of a ride. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I mean, I'm really enjoying it uh, right now. Like our inventory looks something like this on the rack uh, at the far. Now, what we've been doing mostly for about the last. Well, really what we're doing most of period is taking cars that have been in, sitting for 30, 40 years yeah. and bringing them back to life. Hey, I do that, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't get paid for it, though. <laughs> I don't think I, I, I pay do. money to do that. Yeah, I think I do, too. Um, but. So down on the end, uh, we got a 49 Merc, who's a one-owner car that was wow. sitting in storage for 50 years, and we took it out and did a complete restoration on it, put a disc wow. brake, ball joint front end on it. and uh, hey, That would be interior. a good feature there, Mitch. Once it's done. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm having, I got some hard-to-find parts. We got to put the motor back in it. I got a 35 DeSoto that belonged to the mayor of Lawndale, wow. and that was in storage for 40-plus years. Uh, I've got a 69 Cadillac and a... Uh, 29 Model A, which we'll be featuring. It's got a hopped up banger with a Winfield head and two Strombergs on it and that's header cool. and the whole bit. Uh, and that's uh, owned by the owner of Seaway Boats and he's had that thing for decades. 
Wow. And then we just got in a really, really neat 56 Ford F1 fully restored truck. So, you know, I mean, I get to play fun times yeah. all day long. I mean, it's, it's frustrating work. Yeah. You know, if it's a, a Honda brake job, it comes in, you yep. order the rotors, you order the yep. pads, they're here in yep. 30 minutes, bing, bang, yep. boom, you make your money and it's gone. Out the door. Yeah. You know, but well, uh, with, with this stuff, you know, somebody, a guy will come in and go, Hey, um, my car won't start. You think you can look at it for me? Sure. Yeah. Bring it on down. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, your, your wiring's kind of janky. We need to, uh, fix this and it'll, well, you know, while you got it, uh, the rear end's leaking and the front end's squeaking and the steering box is loose. So next thing you know, something that should have taken three hours winds up taking three and a half months, mm -hmm. you know? And so now we've got space issues and yeah. all of that, but all of that being said, uh, I'm extremely fortunate. I'm like a, like a bull in a China shop, pig in a poke, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in my happy place yep. over here. And so, uh, if you want to take a look at what we're doing, uh, you can, uh, visit Instagram. I am, we're, uh, I'm at, uh, Astromotive on Instagram. And on Facebook, you can just look up Astromotive and it'll take you to the Facebook page. And uh, I don't give out our website because that's the website for our late model side of the business. Mm -hmm. I feature all of our, our, our old stuff here on, um, on Instagram and on Facebook, which has been really uh, kind of cool for us. So, you know, it's been tough. We had to let go of our guy, uh, our helper. Uh, things were slowing down because all this coronavirus stuff yeah. and he saw it coming. So he was applying for jobs anyway. And so when I told him we were going to lay him off, he says, well, I already got a job uh, pending with Moog. So wow. he took, uh, he, the, I, that was on Monday, Thursday, the lockdown order came down. Friday was his last day. And then Monday, the phone started ringing off the hook and I, I'm already a month behind already. Wow. Wow. So, uh, my dad has been an absolute trooper. He's 79 years old oh, wow. and he comes in every day and That's turns awesome. wrenches and runs errands and does all that kind of stuff. The man is an absolute machine and it's, it's crazy to, to have a resource like him yeah. for a guy who will come in and he'll see something and he still has the memory retention from 50 years ago. Wow. He remembered specific idiosyncrasies of a certain kind of carburetor or wow. he'll go, Oh yeah, no, uh, these motors have this kind of design thing or whatever. And I'm, I'll yeah. go look it up on the internet and go, what? <laughs> you know? And, uh, so it's kind of crazy that at my age and I'm, I'm 47 and at 47, I'm still learning from my dad every day. And that's the amazing part of my, my business is, uh, I get to work with my dad. I yeah. have amazing customers. I've, I've had in 12 years of being here, I think I've had problems with two customers wow. that whole time. And uh, it's just been an amazing experience. So, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully one day we'll be able to get the race car. I don't know if you can see, I was a little bit of a glare, but hopefully we'll be able to get the race car back out. We've got a, we've got a 23 altered. Uh, runs uh, 860s with um, ANRA. Mm. We run any one, but the car's been parked since we opened the shop because nobody's got time. But um, right, you know that's our that's our little fun thing. It's got a 388, and a Power Glide. And it's run down in the 50s. It'll run in the 40s, but we've never tuned it that hard. It's got a flying toilet on it, self-starting on alcohol. So that's a fun little little thing. But it's cool, man. I get you know I can have my office with all my cool little stuff on it and yeah if people like it they like it if they don't they can go to amco <laughs> <laughs> you know or they can get ripped off you know but, yeah uh, but yeah so that's that's my life you know yeah and uh so pretty cool so let me uh you know we we're seeing um we're seeing a lot of uh sports teams and all that already starting to make their plans for how to open their seasons. Right. So we've already seen that NASCAR has a start date and NHRA has a start date. So I'm curious to get your thoughts about when, uh, when you think we might start seeing uh, car show season open back up. Mm. 
Well, um, around here, like I mentioned last week, they've been doing, you know, the, the, the city cruises. Um, last weekend, uh, the town I live in, they had a get together that the, the high school threw together, you know, let's go cruise Broadway. Um, I didn't make it out there, but, uh, I heard there were, you know, a couple hundred, uh, cars, uh, mostly the, uh, you know, the early models out there running. Um, and then, uh, gosh, I think. June, the street rod gnats are supposed to be here, which they normally happen in April, but for whatever reason, they moved them to June, which makes me happy because it's less conflict. So I don't know. Um, I'm hoping real soon. I know uh, some of them are starting to push back, like, you know, the, the was the ones in Missouri are pushing back to October instead. So um, I'm thinking here any time now, really, uh, I don't, there's not a lot that happens here uh, car show wise, except for little things here and there, but uh Man, I hope soon. I've been, I had to take mine out for the grocery store the other day to, just to get out and go. But uh, I don't know. I, you guys have a lot more car stuff probably out, out there where you guys are. Yeah. In fact, we're supposed to almost hit 100 degrees tomorrow. So for a couple of days, and then it's going to cool back down next week. But I think we hit like 90 today. So yep. weird little warm stretch. But yeah, they're, they've been doing cruises and stuff around here too. Um, Everything, everything car show related keeps getting pushed off, pushed off. I would think, what well, we're kind of in the middle or beginning of May. Um, I would think. Well, a friend of mine actually has a car show set for. Um, oh man, it's in July um, that I'm supposed to be a part of. So I'm hoping that that still goes on. They're opening up all the lakes now. They're opening up the golf courses, so it's not much of a stretch to have a car show get together i wouldn't think because you people are outside they're walking around so it's i don't know i would think maybe six weeks out i would like to think that yeah, I hope you know so. before before you're not going to be hassled by by you know whatever the authorities want to come by and hassle you about <laughs> yeah i know we've uh we've got a lot down here anyway we've got a lot of big shows and i haven't heard anything about any of them yeah. but the temecula yeah. rod run um, they've got, they've, they're already sold out for end of August. Mm. And, um, so over here we're trying, we're still making the determination whether or not we're going to put on our show in September. Um, the, um, the city do, isn't sure if they're going to put on the music festival or not. Mm. And if I have to, I can move, if I really want to put the show on, I can move the show back to the church parking lot. Right. But I just don't know that I'm going to have enough time. Right. Once I know that we're going to be go, if I have time to get the flyers out and do all the promotion, and because I do all this stuff myself, you know. Right. But uh, our uh, our local big show, our weekly show down at Ruby's by the beach, that would have already kicked off by now, and that runs through the end of October. So yeah, we're all everybody's starting to get really itchy around here but i am out here in front of my shop i am seeing a lot of classics just kind of yeah. rolling by people just got to stretch their legs so yeah. yeah i think uh last weekend or well first of the month we had our big uh coffee and cars show um they always do it the first saturday of the month and i want to say they reopened may for or whatever the first weekend of may was so you know i guess as long as you're technically six feet apart from the other person you know he can't stop you from getting out looking at the cars but uh mm. i don't know maybe it'll start kicking off i've been seeing a few of them around too like i said i got mine out and uh just trying to i don't know hopefully soon <laughs> so i'm really curious about something lance maybe you could look into it because you're up that way what's up um jeff Kreider had posted that uh sacramento is putting on a race uh, and I'm just, I don't know if it already happened or if it's happening real soon, but the state is fully under lockdown and that's in Sacramento, but they are putting on the race. So I'm really curious to see if, uh, is it the Sacramento, um, the drag strip in Sacramento yeah, raceway? Yeah. yeah really? It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, bracket race. Hmm. So Interesting. yeah, see if you can see if you can dig any info up on that. Up there, it's on. I mean, it's on the Sacramento website and everything. I'm just kind of curious, yeah. uh, the Sacramento SIR website, uh, or is that what it is? Sacramento Raceway. Yeah. And uh, so I'm just really curious to see how they're getting around this and doing it. 
you know, because I know with NASCAR what they're doing is they're staggering the end times of the teams and they're placing all the teams further away apart from each other, you know, going around the whole uh, perimeter of the property instead of having everybody crammed into the pit area. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I guess they're make the teams all have to wear masks and gloves and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of curious how a bunch of ragged, irresponsible drag racers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I saw today on, uh, on Facebook on the land speed racing uh, page that they're still planning to Bonneville still go. That'd for be great. August. So they're still planning for that unless something happens. Um, Eagle field uh, Rocky announced last week that they're going to, they're going to postpone that their next event is in October. So I don't know if they're going to push it out and reschedule. It sounded like they were just going to reschedule the May event for a little bit further out. So there's still going to be two events this year. So as soon as I know more about that, I'll promote, I'll promote that too um, for him. Cause that's, that's an awesome event. And then our big graffiti, our big graffiti show that we have here, the American graffiti uh, festival, it's usually in the middle of May, uh, June. And so I haven't heard that it was canceled, but I'm assuming it probably is because it's a kind of a community sponsored event. And I'm, you know, it draws a lot of people, but it's just an outdoor car show as well. It's actually on a golf course. So um, I haven't heard much about that either. I'll have to ask around and see what, what the plan is for that, but it will be, it would be great to have it. I mean, that's, you know, four or five weeks away. So people are going to get uh, restless. They are already restless here. So indeed, indeed. Well, <laughs> Hey guys, uh, I have domestic duties to attend to as I'm sure you all do. So oh, yeah. uh, from, uh, so thanks Lance. Thanks Tony. Yeah. And thanks to everybody uh, who joined us tonight on Facebook live for the speed and Chrome illustrated thing. <laughs> that we do. <laughs> so thanks the a third, lot, everybody. It's the third thing. Yeah, the third thing. So you guys have thing. a great night, and uh, we'll see you all next all right, week. Take care. All right, bye, guys. Bye-bye. Yep, sounds good.